This video is to show you how to access a remote SDR using SDR console version 3. It's designed to be used in conjunction with SDRradio.com software version 3 slash server. This can be found on SDRradio.com slash software slash version 3. However, our focus now is downloading the software. So look for the download button by scrolling down under where it says version 3 console and click on the download button. The software will download and you choose run and follow all the prompts to get the latest version of SDR console v3 installed on your PC. Right, for the rest of this video, everything I show is described in the documentation on SDRradio.com software version 3 slash server. So the main instructions are there. What you're now going to see are the screenshots of what you should get as you go through the process. So you've got your SDR console version 3 installed. Launch it. Over on the far top left part of the screen, you should see a button, select radio. So you're going to click on that initially. Ignore anything that may appear from prior attempts at this in the middle. But the second thing to click on is the definitions in the um, bottom right of the uh, select radio box that appears after you click on select radio. The definitions Click in the definitions box will bring up another window and on this one you need to click on search. Search is in the top left of the next window. Here you need to go right to the bottom where it says v3 server and click on v3 server right at the bottom. Next click on SDR space. This will bring up the list of active servers. So now you have a list of all the active servers and with a green tick means there's a, a good chance that uh, they're potentially open to, uh, to for you to um, to connect to. Um, this box is a big wide box, so do expand it right out so you can see all the additional information that uh, people have put on there about their uh, the frequencies covered by the antennas and um, what the actual SDR model and type is. Next thing to do is double click on your choice of radio, the one that you want to uh, to connect to. So just double click on it and then press OK when it appears. Press OK. You'll notice on this screen that it says one device found and sometimes that may not work if there's problems with the remote uh, radio. So um, if the first one you try doesn't work it's worth trying another one in case there's some quirk, quirk of the one that you've selected. So we're there. Simply highlight your newly chosen radio and press start and SDR console will burst into life. So that's all good fun and uh, hours of endless amusement to be had um, looking at other people's or your own uh, other people's uh, uh, SDRs around the world. Now we're going to come on now to what if you want to add your own uh, SDR uh, onto the network for either for your own private use when you're um, away from your preferred uh, receiver site or indeed to make available for others to use as well. So we're going to talk through now how you get the um, how you use the server manager. So first of all click on tools and then server manager and you'll get a prompt asking you 
um, are you happy for the app to make changes to your device? And, and you need to say yes. The first step is to add an account. So you'll see the various tabs under search and server manager. And basically we've got to get all this stuff um, configured. So we'll go down the list pretty much, starting with an account. You need at least one. You can have multiple accounts and you can delete them, add, add them, change their names later as you get uh, more confident in what, uh, what you're doing here. So you need to pick a username, password, and um, there's also a place to put uh, connection times. And if it's going to be a public one, I would recommend an hour as maximum uh, usage time with probably a minimum as a, of a minute um, as a kind of lockout time to stop anyone kind of hogging it permanently. Um, once you've put the, these um, settings in, don't forget to press OK and add to get this first step stored. Now we're going to radios and click on definitions um, so that we can make your particular SDR available over the server. Um, as you can see on this uh, graphic, the next thing to do is click on search to get the list of supported radios. At this point, you need to make sure your SDR is plugged into your PC via um, USB. Um, I am doing a USB example here, as you probably realize, which is the majority of, um, of popular SDRs. And it's probably worth checking it's all working as a local receiver beforehand so that you don't get uh, confused if this uh, process doesn't work. So you want to make sure you, know, you haven't got driver issues or antenna connection problems and so on. Um, SDR console supports all the popular SDRs. We're using uh, an SDR Play here. Uh, we're going to use uh, SDR Play RSP2. So your SDR should now appear as found. And so you're going to click on Add. And this will then make that radio, in our case, an SDR Play RSP2 uh, pop up uh, with a little tick box. And um, very important, you need to click on Save to um, make sure that it appears uh, in the definitions. Right, one thing, because you're going to make, make um, your uh, your PC actually acts as a server. It's got to um, accept um, some different firewall settings. So it depends what kind of internet connection you've got. If you've just got a regular uh, DSL type of um, uh, router, uh, domestic broadband type facility, then um, with just one PC, I would recommend accepting the default port 50101. And all you need to do is go into whatever kind of um, hub manager you have and adjust the port forwarding to open up uh, port 5101 uh, for the specific IP address of your PC. So that's something you have to do. And then the firewall default setting uh, where you just make sure it says allow um, will be able to um, communicate through your hub out to the big wide internet world. Moving on down now to the network settings. Uh, again, we're going to stick with the de default. And um, to start with, depending on your internet connection, I recommend keeping down to probably 200 kilohertz maximum bandwidth. Even that will need a good solid 3.6 megabits up and down, really. Um, to ensure that uh, you don't have any uh, serious glitching um, and stuttering problems. I'm jumping down now to the on air tab. Um, and this is the one where you're going to fill in um, a lot more information uh, about your setup. So this is where you're going to fill in um, a username and password as accessible um, by other people. Uh, this is either going to be made public or um, just for your own use or use of your sort of friends. 
uh, you're going to give it a station name. A lot of radio amateurs do use their call sign because that makes it very easy to see the geography of where the particular stations are around the world. And you may have some website with information. It could be your QRZ.com. It could be um, some other interesting information about the location of the uh, particular uh, SDR. And you could put information about the antenna and um, location information uh, here will override um, the default point of presence that may otherwise be uh, coming up as information about where you're located. Um, there's also, we've kind of skirted over it, but there is a, a place to add some welcome text as well. And again, I find by trial and error, you can soon see how this gets represented on the public information on www.sdrspace.com slash version three. Um, so I recommend just uh, keep it short. Don't, don't try and clutter it too much. Otherwise, it will um, not look very good on the, uh, the public uh, server summary. And as soon as you've done this or gone, gone live, then there will be um, live updates every five or ten seconds on strspace.com slash version three. Um, and then when someone connects to your radio, um, you'll get information appearing there about um, where they are, uh, who they are a little bit. Um, it's all very anonymous, but uh, I haven't got into it here, but if you go on the log file, there's um, some evolving uh, statistics that help you see what countries uh, the various people connecting to you are from and uh, certain other information. So I hope uh, I hope that's kind of uh, given you a good uh, good talk through the basics. Um, I suspect some of this will be upgraded and uh, as ever with SDR console improved over time. So as this gets older, it may get a bit out of date, but hopefully it'll get uh, a lot of you going. It's really good fun connecting your own SDR uh, to the network and uh, being able to see it remotely. At the time of doing this, it was uh, early days. There was only about 20 or 30 different um, users, but uh, I think the numbers are growing all the time. Um, lots of uh, air spies and SDR plays. And um, we do obviously encourage you to look at SDRplay.com for more information about the RSPs, uh, which have um, continuous coverage from a kilohertz up to two gigahertz, no gaps, and actually give you up to 10 megahertz of uh, visible bandwidth. Yeah, SDRs these days are getting more and more powerful and uh, on the strplay.com, under strplay.com slash products, you can, uh, for example, download all the technical, uh, the data sheets and uh, technical information around the RSP products. The SDR Play RSPs all come with SDR Uno software, which um, has additional capabilities tailored uh, specifically to the uh, RSPs. Um, having said that, the performance with SDR console is pretty good, and we really appreciate the efforts of Simon Brown to support so many popular SDRs. And with that in mind, please go to the donation buttons on his website and uh, give generously to his funds, which support his uh, excellent work for the uh, amateur community, as well as uh, keeping his dog in the style uh, that it's become accustomed. So thanks to Simon and thank you all for watching.